Um, no, it's okay. Um, this is a quote from <laughs> my mom, who I think got it from Oprah, who I think got it from somebody else. So <laughs> it could be a Chinese proverb, but I don't know. It's, that's, if you could ever say one prayer in your life, all it would need to be was thank you. And so that was the theme of our prayer card. Inspiring. I, this might sound kind of corny, but you know, but is my relationship with Ryan. I would make breakfast. The eggs in Israel were really delicious for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Because we have such an incredible connection. We would say a prayer, uh, bless the food. It's my family's prayer. Like, I don't even know where it came from. Like, it's just, I, I don't have a life before Ryan. Kind Heavenly Father, pardon our many sins, and thank you for the food we're about to receive. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And then, so you add the dynamic of being jet-lagged and overseas, and you have the deadline of getting the artwork done, Ryan has a deadline of all these things to publish, and all the Skyping, and... If you do include that in the final video, that's from my granddaddy, Lindsay, taught my father how to say that prayer. And... It's hard. I mean, it's just hard on you. And then we would read a verse from the Bible. Ryan and I become closer through all those things. I got this when I was a young man in Clemson, South Carolina, from... Uh, the Fort Hill Presbyterian Church. We become closer because he left law to come to the art business. That either ends relationships or it makes him stronger. This is the first passage we read. It was given to us by, um, her name is Christine Tremolay. He said to him, you shall love and it's Matthew your God chapter your 7, heart, verses 1 through soul, 5. And with all your mind. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounced, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Day three, we drove through the desert. It was gorgeous, actually. And um, <laughs> at the beginning of the trip, John's one of his main wishes came true and he got to ride on a camel. I'm a very sensitive person. I take things in at a point, a lot of times I wish I didn't. Um, there's these Bedouin men. Do you know what that Bedouin people, they live? I'm sitting on the deck and I'm reading the newspaper and it's so beautiful. In these really makeshift places and they're just sort of like people of the desert. If I hear one more car honking, I am going crazy. <laughs> Then we proceed and go to the Dead Sea. They honk there as a cultural thing, y'all. Across from the Dead Sea is the country of Jordan. You couldn't get away from it. You go to a little cafe, we're cafe in the street, you know. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, the salt content uh, float in the water. and uh, I mean, for no reason. It's like kind of a resort. Oh my gosh. But it was really super nice. And then I walked to the studio and it's just honking the whole time. A canteen with food and... But thank goodness she had a, a fan, which is like white noise. You know, I wasn't expecting any of this. As soon as I get out of here, I gotta go through the... Huh? You know when you hear like the Dead Sea? It was insane. We go into our... Uh, put our swimsuits on and we go down. I bought this beautiful ring at one of these shops. And another thing about the Dead Sea, it's the lowest elevation on the earth. And I put the ring on, then we go to the Dead Sea, which is 50% salt. So there's a picture of me and John when it says like minus 422 meters. There's this mud that you put all over your body and it's, it's healing. I was in the water a lot more than Ryan, you know, I'm the one that needs all the healing. So I'm like, let me get, let me absorb all this healing water that I can when I'm here. Sexy, yeah, except it's disgusting. The ring was already tight. Well now the ring's not coming off. He's like, y'all look at my finger. And my fingers turning red and purple. Osnat, our guide, tells us this is like five minutes before getting in the Dead Sea. Eventually your lips will start burning. Now, if you put your face in the water, you will go blind. Go blind. At some point in the middle of the night, he had just had it and he just, I don't know, prayed or just, it came off. Thank God. Okay, the Tel Aviv Pride Parade started at one o'clock. We wore all, uh, John was a real sport. 
Ryan and I. I made us dress up in these very... Uh, <laughs> we wore Texas outfits that Ryan got. Minimal uh, Texas-inspired shorts and hats and boots. So we had boots that I glued little stars on for the sheriff and these uh, Ryan short shorts Ryan got like jogging shorts that had the text flag. Okay, Ryan, I'm doing it. And it just was really cute and we had flags like Israel and Texas. We just looked totally ridiculous. We were famous at that parade. Everybody wanted our picture. It was so much fun. I mean, we had hundreds of people take our picture. A lot of people. <laughs> I mean like a hundred, wanted to take my picture. Of course, every time Ryan's like, yes, you can have a picture, but you need to put it on Facebook, you need to put it online, you need to put it online. <laughs> so on the, on the scale of crazy, we were just like 50%. I learned from the trip more than ever that Ryan, Lindsay, and John Palmer are a team and they're meant to be together for the rest of their lives. Not that I had a question about it. You cannot have a true understanding of a people or a culture unless you make them. But we're just perfect in terms of where we're the same and where we're different. Magazine articles, books, watching CNN, those are all filters of somebody else's viewpoint and opinion and it's told to you as the news. Seeing the gray hairs on my chin on this trip and Ryan's had those for a while, it's like, oh, we're both getting gray hairs in our chin, you know? <laughs> How but until you touch the place or visit or talk to the people that are a part of that news, you cannot truly understand it. How beautiful is that? Uh, good morning. Um, I think I'm repeating the same answer from last year. There's just so many dynamics to each piece, and they're so good. It's that it's different than any other series he's ever created and the detail of some of the painting part, because there's some photographs, some painting. I mean, I hate that I have to repeat that answer, but that is... Some abstract, some realistic, it's just... My honest answer. The depth of Ryan walking in an archway over him. It is obviously unique because of uh, the images. The location where Jesus was crucified, the location where Jesus had the oils and the anointments on his body. That he's been inspired by from the touring of Jerusalem. Um, all these locations that were, are so significant to every religion. You know, here there is some consistency with colors and images, but they're each very different. Um, a very unifying series of arcs that really made me think. I think they will be very prized um, and enjoyed by his collectors. It's not you and me and them and us, and it's us. Being sensitive to a lot of things, Jet lag for me is really intense when it happens, I mean. Uh, the flight home was um, largely uneventful, except for... And what would really put me into orbit of craziness is I'd see a picture of Jane or Bobby because they were on one of my binders, and that would just make me so sad and could not wait to come home. So that was really what I missed a lot. Um, on the leg home from Newark to Houston, I got upgraded to first, first oh, no. class. <laughs> and we're sitting together, and then I think a seat in front of us is open, so I go sit up there where I can have more space. I'm so excited, and Ryan's back there, and he's excited. And all of a sudden, of course, the lady's coming down the thing, and she's looking at me. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I was on row one in the middle seat just by myself, and it was very, very nice. One minute later, here comes the flight attendant. Robert, Ryan, Ryan, Robert, Lindsay, Delta One, let's go. You're getting upgraded. And Ryan's like, Delta, what? I'm like, that's D1, Delta One. Rewarding but tiring trip. It was fun. It was fun. nice. What makes me appreciate being home? This is so typical of me and John too. Whenever we're in the middle of Ireland or Israel, or uh, we always start talking about where where are we gonna go next. It's so nice when you get home and all your senses can go back to normal. Um, I have no idea where we're going next year, but I do have some ideas about the type of essay that I'd like the FCC members to write. Your creature comforts of life that you take for granted. It's going to be hard, you know, <laughs> I might say this every year too on these tapes, it's going to be hard to beat this year. You set back into those and one of the best things, and uh, we did some clips of this with Ryan's camera, is I just could not wait to see Bobby and Jane. We're here, baby! <laughs> oh, did it, Bobby! No place oh, like home. God, I can't wait to go to the next place, but I don't want to do it tomorrow. Jane and Bobby! Oh, I can't believe it.
people uh, supporting us and laughing with us and um, uh, I just hope it'll always remain the same, just like that. Yeah, that's my baby. Yes, my baby.